So what I'll do is I'll try to keep it to 30 minutes. Uh, if you have questions, I can stay as long as you need me. Today. I'll give you a bit of context. So I worked in uh, six years in PNG, uh, six years in Google, three years in Mintra. I was a CMO at Mintra, and then a year in Upstox. And then last March, I decided I'm going to take a year off. Uh, and usually people call it a gap year, I call it a help year. So the objective is I'm here to help you. So if you want to ask questions, if you want to stay back and bug me, if you want to send me a WhatsApp later, everything is well done. This is for you, not for me. It is not about me, it is about you. So please use the time as you feel fit. As you feel fit. Cool? Yes? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, feedback is important. Right? Uh, I don't want to talk to a very quiet room, so feedback is important. So, uh, I thought of a lot of topics I could talk about, right? I can talk about growth, marketing, brand building, SEO, digital marketing. I thought about all that. But I look back at my, all the founders that I've spoken to, all the startups I've spoken to, the number one place where there is a struggle is not all of them. The number one place where there is a struggle is actually this. So hence I picked this topic and it very well aligned with what Prashanji had in mind. So here we are. Most startups fail because they don't follow one fundamental principle. What is it? And this is not me saying uh, out of my experience or just making it up. Proven statistically, this is why startups fail. The numbers are <coughs> why startups. Solving the market. Solving the market need. Uh, not starting and being an ideation stage. Also. Ideation stage, very good answer. <laughs> market size. Uh, market size. Product market fit. So all of you are right, but the best definition of that is product market fit. You would have heard of this term? Yes? Yeah. Anybody who is hearing it for the first time? Don't worry. Okay, I have slides. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> will be taken care of. What is a unicorn before the unicorn? Making a unicorn is, is actually the easier part. What is a unicorn? Mythical creature, right? Cannot find it. Very tough. Where to find? Has a horse and has a horn. Kabhi nahi dekha hai. It is as tough to find product market fit. Not to make a unicorn, right? Finding payments. Now we go into what is it, how to get it and so on. Uh, there are three parts to product market fit. What are the three parts? Product. Market. <laughs> Not tough, no? Product, what are you making? What is your offer? Market, market size, customer, who are you solving it for? Fit, those two things have to match. Usually it doesn't happen. Let's see why. Before that, why should you listen to me? Why should you care about what I have to say? I am I'm not, I'm not a founder. All of you are founders, I am not a founder. Why should you listen to me? Three things. First is, I told you, I worked in all these companies, seeing growth across multiple stages. Uh, 200,000 people, se leke, 2,000 employees, tak ke sare companies. Uh, second one was, I have invested in 40 companies. Worked with a lot of founders very closely. When they struggle, I try to help them. That is second. Third one, my superpower is clarity. I am a good teacher. Okay, so even if it is not something I have done, I can take it and explain it in an understandable, easy way. So, because of that, I think, even things I don't understand, I can present it well, but these are things I do understand. So, hopefully, you will take something out of it. Come, come, come. There are seats. I promise I will not bite. <laughs> yeah, cool. You didn't miss much. We just did an intro. Uh, we are just getting started. I was talking about why PMF is a unicorn before the unicorn. That's all you missed. Okay? What will we cover today? What is PMF? Why is it important? Why is it? What is not PMF? Second, how do you know you have PMF? Does somebody come and tell you do violence play, do angels sing? What happens, right? When there is PMF? How long should it take? Very critical question. Should I wait two months, two years, twenty years? When, how long should I wait? How to get to PMF? This is the most important part. So we we'll cover first three quickly and try to get to question number four. <coughs> Last one, some Sukha Puri. Okay. Everybody understand Sukha Puri? Yes. Okay. Thoda extra, sir. 
something which is not attached to the topic, but I want to give you that extra sukha puri anyways. Important sukha puri. So wait for it. Okay. okay, what is payment? Why is it important? What is not payment? Let's see. YC, Y Combinator, one of the best uh, startup incubators in the world, says make something that people want. Seems very simple. Right? How many of you are founders? Okay. How many of you are founders whose company is doing amazingly well? How, how do you? Uh, it's, it's growing very fast. Right. Customers are like, give me your product. I love it. How many? Okay. If you go by revenue size, I don't know, but it's uh -huh. great. Yeah, you feel happy now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the thing, right? Most of you are seeing revenue, traction, whatever you want to call it, as a push. There is a hill, there is a big rock called growth and you are pushing it up the hill. Push, push, push every day and then it slides and then push again. Sisyphus, have you heard of the story? Yes. There is a Greek mythology where there is a character <laughs> who was cursed with Rose Spoto. Push a rock up a hill and then it will roll down tomorrow, do the same thing. This was uh, most founders feel this way. Most founders I feel too feel this way. So why? Because it's very difficult to make something that people want, not easy. It is a unique product offering that people desperately want. Now there are many words in this, let me explain one by one. It's a unique product offering. I did not say only product. This product is not the offering. The product, the packaging, the pricing, the marketing, the, the, the story, the, the thing that goes behind it in terms of customer service, Amazon placement, all of that is the customer offering. What does the customer get from you is customer offering. That people desperately want. Do you feel that your customers desperately want your product? That is where we want to get. But my definition, slightly even more uh, nuancing this, a product offering that meets its starving crowd. Okay, there is a very nice story about this guy. If you had 10,000 rupees to set up a burger store, your okay, business is burger store, what is the most important thing to look for? Some people say location, some people will say pricing, some people will say taste. If you have a great tasting burger, but it's in the fourth floor of this building. Will somebody find me? Maybe not. If it is a fantastic burger in a great location, but it is right south outside another restaurant where people are just come coming with their full tummy. Will it sell? So you need a starving crowd for your product and you need to find that starving crowd for your product. So this is my definition, right? which is product offering that meets is starving crowd. Now, how do you know it? It reveals itself by organic traction. <laughs> Customer is telling somebody else, go buy this product. Customer is telling somebody else, go buy this product. We will cover all this in detail, but bear with me. The customer will take the product and run away. They will be like, they go, give it to me. And then they will run away and do their own thing with the product. You might say, you should use it like this, right? And they will say, no, 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 I am using it like that, I love it. I am going to use it in my own way. Desperately what is a high bar? I am uh, confessing that maybe every time it is not desperation. Right? But even if they want you and they want you regularly, that is a good enough condition. Okay? So this is PMF. <laughs> unique solution to unique customers, unique pain point. Three parts. This slide will keep coming again and again. Because this is the one slide I want you to remember. If you want to take photos, this is the slide. If I ask you tomorrow, I will call you and ask you, what is payment? You should say, what should you say? Already forgotten. Unique solution to a unique customer's unique pain. Please say it two times to yourself. <laughs> Founder mantra right? Unique solution. Okay, <laughs> very important, yeah. It has to be a unique, and I will explain why it has to be a unique solution, why it has to be a unique customer, why it has to be a unique thing. I will talk about one thing. And this I spoke, it's not just a product, it's a solution. It's and solution not by 
founder saying I want to make this. Solution as in the customer's problem is getting solved. So when you write down the solution, the trick I use, one of the tricks I use is, I will ask the founder to write it as if the customer is describing it. If a customer describes your product, how will he or she describe it? Okay, so this is what PMF is in one step. Now let's look at details. What is the big deal if I don't have PMF? It's okay, sales is happening, growth is happening, 10-20% growth are it's fine. What is the big deal? The world is super efficient. Okay, if you have a product and it is doing well and you still don't have PMF, somebody else will make a similar product and they will sell it at a cheaper price. Then problem, then find PMF again. It is super efficient, just making a slightly better product is not enough. Have you heard of Delta 4? Kunal talks about this a lot. Yeah, okay. So Kunal has this framework. He says your product has to be four times better than your next competition. So Delta is difference, four, four times. He says your product has offering, sorry, correcting myself. Offering has to be four times better than uh, your competing product. Now, I don't say four times, it could be two, it could be five, but it has to be that much better than your competing product. Okay, so this is the first need of a good payment. The only sustainable, this is a controversial statement, so let's look. The only sustainable way to grow your company is through what I am a marketing person, 17 years of marketing. I am saying the only way to grow sustainably is to have a foot. Everything else is supporting that happening. Let me explain. Performance marketing people do. Google ad, Instagram ad, Facebook ad. How many of you are running? Okay. Performance marketing is buying tomorrow's customer today. They would have become your customer eventually. You are just accelerating that customer to become your customer today. It is not actually increasing your baseline. The moment you stop advertising, they will stop coming. Organic growth, word of mouth, even if you don't do any marketing, even if you don't do any growth, your baseline will keep going with this. That is why at the core thing that drives organic growth is PMF. Okay, so far, are you with me? Yes. Making sense? Yes. yes. Clear? Yes. When I have Ola, see my core KPI from this meeting is clarity. If I don't give you clarity, I have not met my KPIs. So you have to stop me and say unclear. Okay? Okay, cool. Think of all the apps on your phone, all the ones that you use regularly. All of them, I can assure you, promise you, all of them landed on your phone because somebody told you, you install grow a channel. Either they told you in person, or they told you on a social media post, you saw your friend write about it on LinkedIn, something happened when somebody else close to you spoke about it. Is it true? Yes. Most of it. What is the example where it was not true? Three installed apps. I will rephrase my statement. <laughs> Install on your phone. We went to Play Store and downloaded it. It happened because somebody told you you should. It is good. This imagine this, right? The amount of time you all spend on thinking about marketing and hacking and uh, this, uh, you know, tool that tool. If you had solved for PMF first, that is the best and longest way to uh, acquire customers. Okay. Um, Anybody knows what this picture is? Hmm. Huh? Looks like a top answer, right? Kabaddi. Mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted to tell the story of PMF, that's why I put this picture. Because stories will stick, theories will go. Anybody who guesses? Some sport. Huh? Some sport. Some sport. Fair enough. I also thought the same. Is it a product mode? This was Baiju's live class in 2015 with 25,000 students in one stadium. He had fantastic PMF. 
here was a teacher who found a way to teach math like a entertaining subject people loved it people showed up this stadium people came from different parts of the state he did five different cities in one week he was so good at it that demand people are pulling this product come please come to my city please come and teach us math fantastic pmf and then what happened what happened what is the immediate next thing that happened this came they launched the second big product which was online uh, streaming uh, video led uh, video led uh, teaching that also did very well 300% revenue a month beautiful business first investment start coming then third product launches why because they have to scale beyond tier 1 and they have to go to more customers they started doing the same things on a tablet with a thumb drive problems now you are trying to go and sell a product which not necessarily is meant for that customer but you are misselling saying if you don't do this your child will fail your uh, they will blame you for life you have not done your duty as a parent it's like ah, okay i will take a loan this driver earning 20000 rupees taking a loan for 40k buy my product then putting more money more money on the fire by doing paid marketing sharuk khan digital ads Less and then other acquisitions for example messi boy ka bhi recent but i'm just giving you the journey right so the until the time when he had good pmf products life was beautiful for his customer and for himself the moment he crossed that line and had to push you know specifics had to push a product which was not meant for the right customer and then poured more money because he had he got so much funding so a great entrepreneur fantastic pmf person turned into a non pmf product pushing person and look where it is now this is the story so do not solve a wrong problem with the wrong inputs the only input is to find product market fit it will a bad pmf product or an offering no matter how much you burn money on it get messi ronaldo you can get every person in the world to endorse it at the end of the day the customer will punish you and not pay you money okay let's continue what is not pmf great product not pmf lots of funding not pmf great team also not pmf funny enough great traction also not pmf great traction can be pmf if it is organic many times lot of sales and revenue can be bought right you do great ads fantastic campaign celebrity you can you can buy the revenue sometimes so how do you know you have pmf we have few tests so now there are a lot of great examples in this i'm giving you only three or four of those if you want more talk to me i'll give you those resources i'll actually pass it to prashant ji you can uh, mail it to all of you uh, the first one is shaun ellis was the uh, head of growth at dropbox and uh, he was a great uh, growth leader because he started some of the early ways of understanding growth growth hacking jo tha mera bol raha hai shaun ellis so his test is you survey your users and you ask them if my product goes away today gaya how bad will you feel this is the question you ask them you are correct users you tell them if my product vanishes how bad will you feel if they say very disappointed so starting from not don't care right uh, actually happy that it should vanish and don't care little bit care slightly more care very disappointed very disappointed if you have 40% more saying very disappointed you are pmf okay okay customer should be like this please please i need this okay this is one test second test customer love it is very simple here people are ready to love like us he is like another growth person very nice but him and uh, steve lang another well known guru of startups in the valley 
He says, somebody, when, they, when you give them your product to them, right, they should be like, where were you all this time? This is exactly what I wanted. At least some part of your customer group should say that. Not everybody. PMF really, you don't have to convince the entire world. Just a small part should say, Oh my God, this is exactly what I wanted. Yehi chahiye tha. Mere life mein yehi nasi tha. Like that. This, uh, again, just to illustrate the point. Nice video. Child eating ice cream for the first time. Yehi jari aksha na. Wo. At least some parts of your customer base should do that. Oh my God, bring it here. Give it to me. <laughs> I will not let go. Right? This is what you want. That reaction, that I locally is what you want from at least some users who say this. If you don't get that, keep working on it. Keep working on it. Okay. Next, retention growth method. Slightly technical, more applicable for tech startups. If you're not a tech startup, still please listen. Uh, I'll actually show the curve. Can you see this? Yes. Is it Okay. So, uh, time, okay, this can be 20 days, 20 hours, 20 months, 20 years, doesn't matter. Usually we pick the cycle time. So if e-commerce, it takes one purchase per month, your cycle time is one month. Is it clear? For a, a social media product, cycle time will be a week. Every week I will come and use you. So let's take e-commerce company. This is a month, okay? Five months, 10 months, 15 months, 20 months. A single cohort, same group of people. Cohort is Yeah, same group of people. 100 people started here. Eventually, if your retention goes to zero, 100 people started here at 5 months, 80 of them continue to shop. At 10 months, that 80 became 60, 40, eventually zero. So, somebody who started buying your product, 100 people started buying your product in March. By 20 months later, they went to zero. You don't have pain. So you will keep adding users and you will keep losing users. This is called leaky bucket. So if you have leaky bucket which goes to zero, don't have pain. This one, 100 became, became uh, 75, became 60, 50. But after this, those 50 people continue to stay. The ones who had to leave left, but this 50 continue to stay. It can be staying at 50, it can be staying at 20, 30, doesn't matter. The fact that some part of your users continue to stay with you and become loyal users is the most single biggest signal of a good PMF. So track all your users every quarter, every month, every week, whatever you the time period is and see if some of them are staying with you forever. Because Danda is made from loyal users. You cannot keep adding new users to the funnel and expecting that your business will continue. You will add 100, I will give you an e-commerce example again. 100 installations, only 10 make one purchase. Of which 5 will make the next purchase. Of which 3 will make the third purchase. So you will add 100 people, you will spend installation for 100 people and get 3 loyal users. Whereas your existing loyal users, they will be in thousands. So they are, are the ones actually going to give you your value. Understood? Okay, understood. Cool. Most important sign, okay, after hearing all this, you can feel it in your guts. If you get it, if you don't get it, you may not, may or may not feel it, but if you get BMF, you will feel your tech will not keep up. Your suppliers will run out of stock. Your shopkeepers will say, Kaha hai Your bank will say, Kya hai? You run out of working uh, capital. All this will happen because your customers say, Give me the product fast. Too fast. Like, give me more. When you feel that, no, you know you have pain. That is what you have to do. You can also feel it when you don't have payments. But some founders are very good at fooling merchants. <laughs> Extremely excellent at fooling merchants. So don't be those ones. Be true to yourself. You can fool your investor, you can fool other people. To yourself, be very, very true. And if you are true, you will get the answer. Okay, before I go to the third section, uh, any questions on this so far? 
So what is PMF? Pop quiz. What is the definition again? Unique product for a unique customer with unique pain. Do you think about it? How long should it take? Any guesses? Tech company example. Ah. So just one question. Ah, please, please. Same topic. So before you get to that organic traction, right? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a. How do you know you have reached that criticality where you know like the two things are the same? What is your product? I don't have a product. What do you want to build? Uh, something in IT. Uh, Let's take any say uh, any product you will be building for a customer because unique offering for a unique customer is unique pain. If you don't have a unique customer's unique pain in mind, don't build anything. This is the mistake most founders do. मेरे पास हथोड़ा है, हाया है हैमर. Where is the nail? You your problem is also a nail. His problem is also a nail. Every problem is not a nail. Don't start with the hammer. Start with what is your pain. Which customer do you want to solve? Question number one. Question number two. What pain do you have that I can solve? So, first of all, don't say I want to build X. You say I want to build for this person and solve this problem. Okay. If you really solve a person's problem well, will they not demand your product? So you know. So, so the fact that you are asking this question means you don't have a customer in mind yet. So, I mean, like, the, the, uh, the question is that, you know, how do you quantify that? Like, you know, okay, this is where you actually hit it. First is to identify customers. For any sector, it might be different, right? Yeah, for every sector, the 40% holds. Mm -hmm. What I showed you, right? every sector, the 40% holds. For every sector, the customer love, baby ice cream, holds. The reason I chose these four criteria, it doesn't matter what industry, what product, who you are doing it for, it will still work. I think the confusion, let me try to read between the lines, okay? The confusion is actually not so much, if I have 100 users or 1000, which should I pick and how should I do? That's not the problem. The problem is, even if you have 20 users, only 20, and you are creating something for those 20 people, 10 of them should say, wow, I need it. Start from there. Then take that 10 to 100, 100 to 1000. But start from there. How long should it take? Any guesses? Average? 6 months. 6 months, 8 months. Okay. Go on. Yesterday. Yesterday. Good, good, good answer. The real founder answer is that. <laughs> Yesterday. Abhita, can you buy? Good answer. Go on. 3 to 5 years. Three to five years. Okay, go on. See, the my short answer is it takes as, as long as it takes. But I'll give you some data points. I, I don't know if you can see this, so let me read it. These are all B2B startups, so take it as a pinch of salt, but still be absolutely valid. The triangle is live product. The square is first customer. This red one is found payment. For example, these are very lucky folks. Huh? This is months, 6 months, 1 year, 1.5 year, 2 year, 3 year, 4 year, 5 year. Started, first day may launch, found customer, found payment. Must. Life is great. What's triangle? Triangle is live product. Product launch over here. Okay. Now let's look at our, one of the com companies we all know, Slack. Okay. Four years with product launch now. I'll tell you the story. Yeah, I'm picking them for a reason. Then found first customer, then found player. I'll give you some other interesting examples. Slack is still sub sample one. Look at this. Amplitude launch product. Didn't find one customer until a year later. Didn't find payment until one more year later. Let's take some uh, other examples. Product and first customer say payment of much later. So the reason I'm sharing this with you, it is not an easy path because of the complexity of finding real customer problem for a unique customer and then creating something you have to understand to solve that problem first of all. 
So this combination is tough. So it takes time. Slack example I, I wanted to tell you. So uh, Stuart Butterfield, the founder of Slack. He also was the founder of uh, this company called uh, Flickr. Photo sharing. Then he sold that, started the second company. It was supposed to be a gaming company. They built a gaming product for that many years, two, three years. Finally, nothing was moving. No revenue, no customer, no traction, nobody saying give me your product. But they had developed an internal system to chat with their employees. It was an employee tool. That thing had a lot of traction. Even as the internal team said, we love it. Then the people in Silicon Valley who saw it, Slack employees working on it, they were like, dude, what is this? Can I, can I also take it for my company? So organically people are saying, give it to me. And then they launched it as a separate product and the rest is system. I'll give another example, not a tech example. Uh, a uh, Honda is a company. Honda wanted to launch in the US. And their main selling product outside of US is big motorbikes. <coughs> Huge like SRs. Huh. So they launched it in the US, but US was a market of Harley Davidson. Huge bike, fantastic brand, 100 years old, right? Nobody is buying. So Honda kept trying, kept trying, kept trying, please buy, discount, bigger bike, more efficiency, less petrol, nobody cared. But what happened was they their employees brought in some scooters which they were using for themselves, right? I am in Japan, we ride scooters, I want to ride scooter here, please give me a scooter. People saw the scooters on the street and they said, hey, what is that? Where can I buy them? And then it became a thing where Honda entered US through selling scooters. And that became a product that became a super hit. So PMF can come in all sorts of ways. Okay? Let me move on. Third part. Ah. If I understand it right, it could be if you're not sure what the PMF is or where you are in your journey, you can either change the product so that it becomes unique Correct. or you can change the customer so that Correct. you find unique customer for your existing product. Perfect. Either way. Yes. And or you pick the same customer, solve a different problem. Three parts. Three parts. Uh, so, 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 one minute. Oh, I think I will give you. Hi, hi, hi. I'll repeat the question. Go ahead. Okay, sure, sure. Go ahead. So, uh, so one obviously a conventional wisdom says that product market fit has to be something unique and stuff like that. Sometimes these are just self talks that I do. Like a lot of these conventional businesses before the startup era, right? They didn't have this fancy decks and everything. For them, product market fit is ki jo business mein chalega. It can be as simple as selling chai or a kachori or a Correct. paradise biryani of Hyderabad, Correct. right? So I'm saying now, if you see all the biryani brands around with biryani by kilo and all, but Paradise Biryani has become a, you know, from a case study, it's a product market fit, but does it always have to be super unique? Because I don't know, this is what I believe is that as long as you're capturing masses with a, even a simple product, it may not have a fancy notion, it's a product market fit. Good so question. I to I'm ask. glad you asked this question. I'll repeat the question. So does PMF have to be a marketing fellow coming and doing slide? No, I'm just <laughs> it's not saying that. <laughs> no, I, I like to make fun of myself. It's okay. It doesn't have to be this whole framework thing or can we just launch a good product and then it scales and it becomes a multi-billion dollar business. Right? I'll give two parts to that answer. First part of the answer is, if you are building a startup, and we define startup in a very specific way. A startup is not a business. A startup, by definition, is a company which is doing very risky things, which more likely will fail, but the 5% chance of it succeeds is going to give you 1000 x returns. And it is going to be a product that will scale worldwide. And it is something that is tech-based, innovation-based, and it can spread like fire. This is what a startup is, which is why VCs only invest in these kind of companies. They want to invest in China. Okay. A startup has to have this level of uniqueness to scale 1000x. If it is a 1.1 1 .1 bet, like 10% better product, it is not going to become a 1000x. For a startup, you will have to listen to this presentation. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is point number one. Point number two, let's take the example of Paradise Begin. I like that example because it is just begin. 
when they started they would have had something extremely unique in food it is usually flavor mm -hmm. and from bangalore bangalore mein meghna biryani nobody cares about paradas meghna biryani very good taste that flavor comes from a certain use of spices and a little bit of msg they have found a way to crack the the flavor and the smoothness in such a way that nobody is able to replicate it it was that unique if it was not unique it would have been the 100th amur biryani on that street it was unique even traditionally old products have something unique nirma detergent at that time of surf and uh, whatever they launched the same category at one third the cost it was unique i cannot find of a single big brand that you and i use where it is not unique not a single example something is in price proposition innovation the story product uh, formula experience customers something is something unique. that's why i said offering offering is everything yes. everything may something is unique yeah what is a brand identify brand is like so when 200 years ago when there were cows hey that is my cow no no that is my cow they put brand on the cows back okay hence called brand mm. this is different brand's job is to say i am different that's the job of a brand if you are not doing that you are if you are not being unique in product story offering customer service formula whatever then it will not scale You give me any example where something has scaled without being unique. I will tell you what is unique in that. Understood. जब लोग दुकान में जाते हैं ना, first thing they ask is नया क्या है? नया क्या है? If it is not there, when you don't see the word new in the corner with the star around it, nobody cares. Something has to be. Anyways, we'll we'll talk. Ah. Hey sir, I think. You... We have another round of discussions. Right? Ah, can we take the questions after? Okay, good, good point. Can you hold on? Yeah. How much more time can I take for the slides? Another five minutes. Okay, oh, good. We'll get to the how to find payments quickly. That is important. Please <laughs> listen. <laughs> All this jar is fine. You have to get to how to find payments. Okay. Ah, this is an important question. Let's say it takes four years. Should we give up or not? Like, are you on the right track? Not on the right track? How do I know? Important question, right? Is it a PMF question or a fundamental like market question? What is the? Like, how do I know when should I know? When you are in love with the problem and the space, not the product, not the company, not your idea, those things will all change. If you are in love with the problem and the space, then stick around. Let it take as much time as it takes. If you are not in it for the problem and the space, think about it. This is a very important question. I picked it up from one of my favorite books. Please read it, all of you. Disciplined Entrepreneurship by Bill Oman. Disciplined Entrepreneurship is the textbook for MIT entrepreneurs. Beautiful book talks about everything, starting from finding payment, fall the way to how to develop product, monetization, sub kuch. Twenty four steps of building a company. A book me. Is it too thick? No, it's not. It's actually a very good, illustrated, nice story. Easy book, not too thick. ठीक है, so उसमें what he says is how to find something that you can work for a long time. Right? Startups are tough, right? Seven years, ten years it takes to get something out of it. He says, what am I good at, and what can I do for a long period of time? These two things have to come together. If these two things come together, you can you can apply the first criteria and you can keep doing. Okay. Yes, ready? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> If I had an answer, I would not be here giving speeches to you. I would have been building products, <laughs> right? I would write a book. All of us will be billionaires. We would all be living in Mars in like uh, you know spaceships. It's not easy. But having said that, I'll give you some clear, actionable tips which will help you. Since you are how many days? Four, seven, five days away from Valentine's. If you are not able to find a mate, take a date to Milray. 
wife name will be, girlfriend name will be. What will you do? Or boyfriend, whatever, being gender neutral. What will you do? First thing you do is you will make the product better. Right? You will go to the gym, learn books, <laughs> get a degree, get a fascinating job, success, you do all that, right? Second, what will you do? You will <laughs> better packaging, right? You will do all nice looking, you will make up your hair, you will go to the salon, girls will get their hair cut and uh, wear nice dresses. This is second. Okay? Third one. This also doesn't work. Find a different girl. Maybe this type of girl is not for me. <laughs> right? So you will, maybe you are talking to the wrong girl or boy. Maybe you want to try a different type of person. Right? We'll change the. So what is what are we doing? Right? Either it's a product or the market or the pain point. I told you. <laughs> Not by mistake. Deliberately, I put the slide again. Please look at it. Remember. Okay. Now let's talk about deeply understanding the customer. Most pro often, the problem is not that we don't have a problem in mind or a customer in mind. It is that we are trying to solve for a too large a customer base. We will solve for everybody. All Goa tourism, I will solve. No. Start with Goa people in Goa who ride taxis. Usme people in Goa official uh, visits in Goa who ride taxis. Usme official visits in Goa who ride taxis but go to five star hotel. Solve for this person first. It's enough. And then expand, 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 expand. Start with a niche where you can solve it better than anyone else. Your product is so much better for that niche that they give you the baby and ice cream feedback. And why you? Because only you can solve it for that cohort and not anyone else. Start from that. I already spoke this. Full and so Misho has this nice. I really like the name. They have a process every month. Uh, where they go and meet customers, it's called listen or die. Literally, if you don't listen to your customer, you die. So please go and listen to your customer every day. For startups, every day. Go talk to your customers every day. This is something that people usually don't do. I learned it the hard way after almost seven, eight years of my work experience. People will say random shit. If you ask them, do you like this product? What feature do you want? Scale it, rate it on a scale of one to five. They will say anything that comes to mind. They will try to be true, but they are fooling themselves most of the time. What you do is you observe. If you are launching an app, sit behind the person, watch over their shoulder, how will they use the app? I, the first ever product that I marketed was Breeze Soap. Breeze Soap? 20 rupees ka theme. Okay? Uh, Universe said, go visit the customer. Go. Calcutta, fly to Calcutta, drive two hours, go to a government lady, lady in the house, watch her use the soa sabun on her chain. Then you will learn. I'll give you an example. The first time I went on this trip, I went to a, a house which was about this big. And there's only one room. Bed there is a TV there, there's a kitchen. Bathroom is outside, shared bathroom. Okay. I, I was sent there. And uh, I asked the lady, can I see your soap? <coughs> so she sends her bacha. See, sorry, thanks. She sends her kid, says, uh, go bring the soap from outside. <coughs> so this kid is like going outside and I am wondering, why is the soap outside? I mean, you used it in the bathroom, but bring it back. Why is the soap outside? So um, they bring it back. Then I ask the lady, why is the soap outside? She says, when you use the soap, it's wet. And when you leave it wet, go gal jata. You understand gal right? It's that squishy part of it gets wasted. So she puts it in the sun so that it becomes hard again, so that it lasts two more days extra. Mm. For a 10 rupee soap. That's when I understood the value of money and savings for the day. Then when I made her next offer, I never took up the price. Because for them a 10 rupee soap is very important. So you have to do some to understand the customer, you have to go and see them. You have to put yourself in their shoes and understand what that two days extra lasting of that 10 rupees soap matters to you. Okay, so please go meet the customer. Using the core feedback, I told you, right? So start with a small group, take feedback, and then apply it and scale to the next, then the next, then the next. Solve for the core group so well that you get that ice cream, channel ice cream experience. 
Then identify the next market, we build about process from step one. This is customer. This one is a very important, important point, I can't stress enough. The, actually, let me take a step. You know what differentiates a startup from a large company? Limited resources, they build limited resources. Correct. But what's the secret advantage that a startup has? Agile. Define, define agility. Some, who said agile? What does agility do to the company? Change, change is not the secret ingredient. Change is true, but that's not the secret for superpower. That is also not the secret superpower. Ability to risk, ability to fail. Ability to risk, all true, not the secret superpower. Uh, that's same as this. True, not the secret superpower. Able to listen to the customer and change the body. The secret superpower is cycle time. Okay? Launch, get feedback, change, iterate, launch again, get feedback. This only startups can do. Yeah. If large company will take six months to launch and then take feedback and change. Startup will do it in a week. That's why software companies have app releases every week. You already listen to feedback, you already made changes, already launched. This is why software is eating the world. Every other type of category of company cannot iterate 52 times in a year. Only software can iterate 52 times in a year. That's why 1990s were top 10 companies in the world, 6 oil companies, 4 banks and everything else was time pass. 2020, 8 out of 10 are tech companies. Why? Because of this. So you have this unique advantage of having fast cycle times. Cycle very fast. Launch, get feedback, iterate, launch again, get feedback, iterate. So what are, even if it's a hardware, even if it's a physical product, talk to your customer often. You may not be able to launch fast enough, but you can talk to customer fast enough. I spoke about this for daily updates based on daily feedback. Do not grow by paid media. Marketer telling you this, please listen to me. Grow by own media, non media. I will explain what these things are. Three types of media, okay? Own media is your own own media. Social media, your web page, your Instagram, your YouTube, your app, your CRM channel, your customer service phone number. All these are your media. You reach out to customer through your own, own, own media. Earned media is other people talking about you for free. PRV, some you launch something great, press is writing about you. Some influencer is talking about you. Some celebrity is tagged you in his post. That is called earned media. Paid media is you paid out of your pocket to shop. Three types of media. Do not do paid media in your early days. This I explain, this I explain. This what it does is this also forces good product discipline. If you can use paid media and grow, then you are not going to be disciplined about building a product. But when you can't grow with money, then you have to be disciplined. Once a great product happens, performance marketing is rocket fuel. So what I usually say is this. Can you see this? It is a great fuel or a raging fire. But do not use it to start a fire. Starting a fire has to be Gisna Patta. Literally and figuratively. Gisna Patta fire bantti. Fire me you can put fuel on top of it. I think I lost. I think it's... You can have this conversation. Ah, so... Is it clear so far? Yes. Making sense? Useful? Yes. Okay. Uh, the last one I want to tell, uh, there is also one um, type of usage of performance media which is okay. Which is if you want to get a small set of users who will use you so that they can give feedback. It is okay to get those users by paying. But once you have that, you should try to grow. Okay. Last one, product founder market fit. You get it. Okay. Be very sure that there is a problem as a customer, there is a unique pain point. But are you the right person to solve for it? 
do you have passion so much in that space that are you the right person or somebody else should be solving for it be very clear if you have product found and market and then you will be able to last a long time resilience is more more very important if you have product found and market fit you will be working on it for a long time this is the if the answer is no about these two things then don't be a founder right so that's it uh, i have i have communities there's one for uh, it's called startup scale up you can go to either go to harish.cc uh, 